it's the Thursday morning mojo. All right. Yay. <laughs> um, thanks for joining us. So we've had a great lineup of speakers so far. Um, William Way was amazing. His recording is live now, I believe, um, up on the Hoover website and YouTube. Um, John McLean was last night and he was just a phenomenal storyteller uh, of the Blackfoot River. And he's gonna be talking, or he will have his uh, recording up here soon today, most likely. Um, and then today we got Leanne Potter, who will just be phenomenal. We'll, we'll say a little bit more about her later. Sherry, do you want to walk us through the day? Um, Cindy's going to kick us off today. Oh, Cindy, all right. Well, either way. So live at 11, we have lessons on local government. Um, back Going back at 9, we have um, primary source conversations, working with the exhibits. 2 p.m., we have um, working with maps, which Sherry and maps are just amazing. And then, of course, Leanne Potter. <clears throat> who is always, I've never once heard her speak that she wasn't just phenomenal. So she, I'm looking really forward to her. And so don't forget to visit our partners in the resource center or the area of resources, great stuff there. And speaking of great stuff, yesterday, our two geeky teachers batted it out of the, the stadium again with Padlet using um, William Way's book on, on the 100 artifacts. Just just amazing. We, I so enjoyed that and I'm going to definitely give that a shot. Gary, what did you like about Badlin? Well, the one thing that I was like, oh, I would love to do that six word story. You know, when, when I hear a lot of those resources, it's like I, I try to pick one that I want to try. And um, there's always so many choices when, when the um, Michelle and Laura get together, but it sounded like a way to really make things concise. And, and I could see that working really well with primary sources. Well, and it could be a great assessment when you think somebody has to synthesize down to six words. That's amazing. Yeah, and easy to grade. Yeah, very, very good, yes. Um, and then at nine yesterday, we had, three strategies to increase cultural humility or tra trauma-informed practices. Call Raleigh and Kyle gave us some great things to think about. And I really appreciated the, all the examples that they gave. Um, for me, especially for those of us that are retired and, and aren't working directly with kids, um, seeing those examples and, and imagining how we would use those with kids I think really would help classroom teachers as well, figuring out how how those little little tidbits and, and putting them into practice. So the, the examples were really helpful. They were. And then we had Kayla Gabehart from National History Day. I wish I had her mastering the thesis statement um, information when I was in the classroom because that's always something tough to get across to teach to kids but she had among the things that she had that i thought were wonderful was a checklist on your thesis statement like being specific and using the five w's and and mentioning the topic um and and or the theme yeah and then and how it fit into the theme um i just thought that was really spot on and I just, again, it was so explicit and detailed and, and it was a method that you could recreate pretty easily. Um, I would have liked to have had it when I was in, in school as well, when, not just when I was teaching, but when I was a student. Right. Um, so that, that I think is something to, to bookmark or, or keep track of and, and use as you go forward, especially if you're gonna have students participate in National History Day. Um, the, the last section we did was on the audio, um, and technically we were talking about um, slave narratives that kind of got a little off track about at things with videos and, and transcriptions. Um, but there's a whole lot of other audio resources that the library has that's music and speeches. 
So if you're interested in, in more resources other than the examples that we gave you, um, just going into the search box and you can choose audio there and you'll be overwhelmed with all the options that are in that section. Um, also, Kyle was going to um, add a link to an album. We mentioned the teacher um, network that's available, and there's an album there where all of those resources are. So if you're in the network, you can get to that album. And if you're not, the nice thing is that you can save that album and, and share it outside the network. Um, just an, an aside on, on the network, too. For me, as a, a person who's collecting primary sources, being able to use that album option is a great way for me to store the items that I found, and then I can go back and find them. So not only is it, it items that you can use, um, you know, that have already been curated, but as a person who's curating them to be able to have a place to store them. Awesome. And then we finished the uh, day with an uh, incredible talk by John McLean, the who'd writ written Home Waters, A Legacy Renewed. And um, Sherry and I, after the five o'clock um, session's over, we always get together and talk about what we're gonna say for our morning mojo. And we talked a long time about place last night. And one of the things that we talked about was, you know, what what places are important to us and, and why. Um, often it's in reference to nostalgia. It was a place that was a place you went on vacation or a happy place that you went. Um, but talking about how hopefully everyone has a, a place that they can look back on. But sometimes there's it's a mixed bag. And I think um, John explained a lot of that it was a mixed bag for their family. Um, the time that they spent with, with um, the Uncle Paul and, and that whole segment of the story. So it, it wasn't all you know, roses and sunshine and wonderful. It's a, it's a mixed experience. So connecting to a place and, and really being able to focus on that is, is a good way, I think, to help our students think about what's important to them and what they'll look back on. And so with that, Sherry, you're gonna talk about um, the, environment, <clears throat> the environment and place as- um, I before we do that, I wondered if anyone else had comments about the John McLean session yesterday. Good morning. I would say one of the best things about John and is he is totally open to um, being in touch and um, continuing to follow up. If you have questions, feel, feel free to place them in Whova. We're following up in Whova for those and we're in touch with Mr. McLean. Um, he got in touch with us last night and was excited um, with how the presentation went. He was pleased to be with you. And we're happy to pass those questions on to him if you've got any specifics. So if you wanna ask those in chat or throw them into Whova, we're happy to follow up with Mr. McLean and make sure that those get answered. We also have a question doc that we're working on. We have some of you that have been in Goose Chase asking about resources with the Library of Congress, um, also been in Whova asking for resources. We are answering them as fast as we can. Um, I know that was my breakfast this morning is going through the discussion board in Whova, um, looking at the wonderful and rich conversations happening there. And I know we've been um, chasing down some of those questions in Goose Chase as well. So continue to ask. Um, and Mr. McLean said, thank you um, for allowing him to be with us last night and to please let him know if we have other questions. So I just wanted to pass that on. Thank you all for continuing to have those rich discussions, both during our sessions and outside in our other um, applications too. We love hearing from you. Great. And you wanna, you wanna um, update us on the Goose Chase leaderboard? Sure, it's right here and I'll allow, um, I'll totally allow Laura to join in on this one too. So you can see Mr. McLean, we had some selfies that were taken and look at there's Dr. Way, our evening um, speakers. We've got people joining in um, to take those selfies as they listen. Um, to our speakers. It's wonderful to see them. Um, it's still early. You know, we are in our week, we're um, knee deep up to all of the challenges. People are exploring lots of different things and getting out to the Library of Congress to dive in to those very special resources. Shelly Porter 
is batting it out of the park. And then we've got um, Kathy Coit that's right behind it at 10,000 points as well. But we've got prizes all over the place. So hop in, keep looking. And for those of you who are in Whova, we've got prizes in there as well um, that'll be coming your direction. So keep on it. Laura, you want to say anything about Goose Chase? It's been very fun to be in there and to see the responses. You are all having a great time in Goose Chase and having fun with uh, primary sources. I will say we have a little bit of an issue with defining what a selfie is. This one uh, selfie with John McClain, I had a note that said, you can kind of see my reflection in the screen. <laughs> so you are, uh, you are having fun and uh, uh, we're enjoying all of the discussions, the questions and your use of primary sources and also your thinking. I'd love to see how you are uh, thinking about applying primary sources and some of the resources in Goose Chase in your classroom. There's so many. We've tried to really make sure that the questions in Goose Chase are a resource for you and something that will help you to think or to find a new uh, place to find primary sources. So be sure and get in there and don't miss out on uh, all that's going on. And make sure you're not just playing, you're also reading the feed because the shared information that's coming from all of you, we learn so much. Learn from each other, um, go into your feed, look at what people are um, posting and get some new ideas for your classroom, um, from your library and from our partners with TLD as well. You know, it's wonderful to see people matching um, local state and national resources together um, with our nation's library. So jump on in, uh, play, but have some fun reading and learning from others too. Um, it's rock star to see that. Just a quick update. Um, again, uh, we'll we'll hand out the contact hour certificate after the conference. Um, we'll have a end of conference survey um, that we'll send out Friday or Saturday. Um, and on there, you can request a contact hour certificate. Um, again, please click rate session and let us know how we did. Um, we use this feedback for next year um, to improve it for next year. Um, and then I posted the document in. Uh, in Whova as well um, as in uh, Zoom. And then here's the bit.ly link um, for the questions document. And we'll continue to add to this, um, but we figured it might be good for everybody to have um, an eye on the questions and a, and a, a central place to see what the answers were because you know sharing is caring, right? So um, let's hand it over. I'm gonna close this real quick. And then Sherry, go ahead. Okay, well, um... <clears throat> When I started to, to gather resources to go with um, the topic of um, the environment and place, um, I had not read um, um, John's book, but I had read um, A River, When a River Runs Through It, but years and years ago. So it had been a while since I had I'd read it. So I, I started gathering things, looking for things that would, would be in the library's website about um, the, the specific river that, that he talked about um, over and over again. And I didn't find much, but I found this Milltown Bridge and Milltown Dam in Missoula. And I thought, oh, well, this gives us some, some information. Now this is from what's called the Habs Hair Collection, and which is the Historic American Engineering Record. And so there's multiple images of, of this bridge um, and then that's connected to the dam that was part of it. And then most of the time there's, there's detailed um, technical drawings showing how, how the bridge was constructed or how the dam functioned or all of that kind of thing. And so this, this historic American engineering record has amazing things. Um, just a little of the background. It was, it still functions um, today, but it was putting the engineer. Um, but then I, he mentioned something about the dam being taken out. So last night after the talk, I, I went and looked that up and lo and behold, that dam was removed in 2009 um, as part of a, a super fun cleanup. And, um, and I had no idea. These are all older pictures and didn't have much about the dam being removed. So um, it's, a, it's kind of serendipitous about how things um, come together, but um, take a look at these. They're pretty, pretty amazing. This is the inside of that dam that they've now removed. 
but to see the the science that went on in there and the, the engineering, um, pretty impressive. So as I went through um, collecting resources, I found some, some images of, of rivers. I was looking for rivers in Montana. Um, I liked these images. They're not anywhere close to the rivers that um, John talked about, but I think a sense of place um, can be anywhere. And we are going to be looking for things in our local areas to connect to. Having a work of literature that, that makes you want to take a field trip to go to that place um, can be, be creative, but then you, you need to look in your own backyard. Now, when I first looked at this picture, I just thought those were more rocks. And if you look closely, it's, it's sheep. Um, of course, if you read the title, you would see that it says sheep at the Madison River. Um, but again, looking for those details, finding little tidbits to connect to. Um, I don't know if any of your students have seen, you know, a large flock of sheep coming to a river to water, but um, I just thought the, the light rocks and the sheep were, were kind of an interesting image. So as we scroll through my list, um, the other thing that I pointed, wanted to include were the stereograph images. Those are really um, pretty amazing. And, and that was how in the early days, people had their little um, stereograph and that was how they saw images of, of these places that were gonna be national parks or, or just uh, to travel. If you lived in the big city and you'd never been out in, in Glacier National Park, this was a way for you to travel by, you know, we didn't have TV, we, obviously we didn't have, a lot of people couldn't travel. So this was a great way. And so these um, stereoscope or, or um, graphic photographic prints are a great collection and fun, fun to use. You can even buy reproductive um, stereographs um, that you could have in your classroom. And then this one was fly fishing. Um, this is probably what would happen if I tried to go fly fishing. Um, <laughs> but I thought this was just kind of a fun one. When you're searching for things, you, you have to limit yourself, but then you get off on tangents and, and so it's, it can be kind of fun. But this could be a way to introduce um, the book and what is fly fishing and why is it important and, and you know, what is this guy doing and, and what's happening and all of that. So just kind of a, a fun one to have in the collection. Well, then as I kept going, I looked for lesson plans. In the teacher page, there are lesson plans that teachers have put together uh, around topics, all different kinds of topics. So this one, the first one is the Hetch Hetchy controversy, which was part of the Yosemite National Forming, forming the Park. And here's our friend, um, Teddy Roosevelt and John Muir and their relationship and how that evolved. The, the second um, lesson plan is the environmental resources and um, management. So we look at, at the Park Service and we look at the Bureau of Land Management and the conservation efforts around um, wild places. So again, these lesson plans, you, you probably or might, you might use it just as it is, but feel free to go in and take out what, what's included that might work for you and, and don't feel that you need to follow the lesson plan exactly. Uh, the next lesson plan that I found was um, photographer, um, artist, and the Yellowstone. Again, trying to explain to people back home in Congress or people back home um, in the cities back east what the, the majestic um, areas of the West were. For those of us that, that live in the West, um, we appreciate these things, but for people who've never seen them, to have an artist who could depict these and share these, these images is incredibly powerful. And I think the third, let's see, we're going into the lesson plan. Yeah, the third one was on fishing. Now, New England fishing has nothing to do with Montana, but it does have to do with fishing. So I felt like um, if you lived in New England or, or New England was your special place that you like to go, connecting fishing um, all over the country is another way to, to make connections. So this is a, a, an extra lesson plan. Now you might notice um, on the lesson plan right under the image, it says jump to, and there's a section for preparation of what you need to do to prepare this lesson. And then there's a section um, on um, 
the second part is, is the actual implementation or the procedure and then how to evaluate. So all the lesson plans follow the same format with the objectives and, and all of that. So again, go in, find what they did for their lesson, find um, examples of, of the resources that they use and take what you want and modify it and make it your own. Um, there are collections. I think yesterday, um, Cindy talked about the collections that the library has put together um, and the, um, the timeline. Some of these collections have been moved over to a new format, but this one is in the old American memory format, which many of us remember nostalgically. But again, the information is all still here. So, so there's lots of items that you can browse, subjects and titles. There's that chr chrono chronology of um, the time period of the American conservation movement. And again, it just goes up to 1920. Um, I'm back to conservation movement. And when I was in, I grew up in Ohio. And when I was in high school, the Cuyahoga River caught on fire. And uh, doing a little, going back and looking at the dates of all of that, that was the year before uh, Earth Day. And so obviously the American conservation movement has, has continued and continues to this day, but this is looking back at that time period on this one. Um, but I was, I was reflecting back to my ideas of my sense of place and what was um, motivated me to think about things from, from a conservation perspective. And I think we all have something in our past that, that we look back and, and think, how do we make this better? Which I think was part of the point of John's book is what do we do? How do we implement conservation um, efforts in our own community, in our own special places? As we go through the, this, this list, um, then I started looking for things that had to do with science and um, environmentalism. So these are resources that might be um, something you'll use. Hopefully you've, you've used Everyday Mysteries. Um, there's lots of science related things. There's science reference guides with all kinds of resources. Um, this list is um, extensive and you might find a topic there. Some background about Earth Day. Um, oh, here we have a camel for our, our Everyday Mysteries, but there's a million different ones. And um, that can be a fun area. And then you can look at different topics. So bringing the science and, and environmentalism into your classroom. Uh, next on our list, um, resources for kids and young adults. Again, environmentalism. And these are the science reference guides. So lots of links, links outside the library, links to literature, links for parents. Um, so again, so much out there. It's like the taking the drink from the fire hose. Um, there was a resource guide for Rachel Carson, which of course her book, Silent Spring was a big motivator, um, for the environmental movement. And, um, there's a webcast here, um, about this, uh, a biography, I, I believe. And, um, from book festival all of the authors and that come to speak those are recorded and to be able to hear an author's talk about their book is really powerful so that's another side point with um the uh, national book festival so you can see here there's there's ones on reduce reuse recycle lewis and clark there's extensive resources uh yosemite national park and then one on garden and forest collection, which was one I'd never heard of. It's a really small collection, but it has um, some interesting images. And so many schools are doing um, school gardens and planting plants to, to perhaps uh, encourage monarch butterflies or whatever. So that might be another angle that you could take at your school. Um, and then I found some resources outside the library. I, I started looking just for Montana, but um, I'm sure there are local river organizations in your area that would um, also have resources that you could use in your classroom. And then um, I believe there was one, oh, uh, there was a new version that um, I made and I don't know that I sent it to you, Kyle, but last night I had looked at maps and there are amazing maps of, of rivers all over the country. 
um, if you go to the map collection, um, you can, where you search in that pull down menu, you find maps and, and you put in your local river and you'll be amazed at what you find. Um, as I was looking through maps, I actually found one um, from Columbia, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it again on my screen. Um, type in the word Columbia. Yeah. And then rip. No, it's C-O-L-O. C-O-L-O. Sorry. Yes. Let's scroll down. Let's see if we go to um, instead of list at the top, if we go to um, grid. And if we'll scroll through, maybe we can find it. I don't, I had it on another. Here okay, um, on the left, the third one down, that one, yes. Oh, no, up one, there. Down one? Down one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> This is called driving with, um, yes, that one. Um, and I thought it was really um, an impressive looking map. I love the, the colors of it. And so I was sharing with Cindy last night when we were having our chat about some of these maps of rivers and how gorgeous they were. I said, this doesn't have anything to do with, with our talk because it's not even in the United States. And Cindy said, I used to live in Colombia. I wonder where this is. And so she looked it up and this river was went through the town where you lived, right, Cindy? Right. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea of finding place and finding something that you can connect to, um, I had no idea I was finding something that that anybody even would know of and here it connected to what Cindy, um, where Cindy had lived and and the work that she had done. So anyway, have fun with, with searching for, for maps for your area, make it local, make it connected to your community and use um, John's book as a, as a motivator for how you can get you and your students involved in, in making your special part of the world um, a little bit better. And Sherry, I just realized this map, <clears throat> Buena Ventura is actually on the west, but it's shown on the east here. Ah, so the map is revert. Uh, the so it should be upside down. No, there we go. Yeah, there. Yeah. So you just would have to fix that boat. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's upside down. But anyway, uh, any any comments from the the group? Sherry, thanks for all the resources. I know we'll be sharing some of these back to the McLean Project um, team as well. They're really amazing and we appreciate it. And I know Laura's put um, resources from the library in the one pager from John McLean as well. And we will add some of these onto that too. So thank you for sharing your wealth of knowledge with this. Um, we really appreciate it. It really adds a whole layer um, to literature and to that connection to the classroom and how we use primary sources and text together. So thank you for that. We really appreciate it. I always, you know, it's the rabbit hole. Once you start looking, then you kind of get a little uh, carried away, but thanks for indulging me. <laughs> thank you. All right, well, that's it for uh, Thursday Morning Mojo. So thanks for joining us. Um, we'll see you for the rest of the day. Again, we got a great, um, Brown bag at 11 o'clock. That one's going to be live with uh, Kent Wellman and lessons on local government. Um, and then uh, just a reminder to at five o'clock, um, Leanne Potter from the uh, Library of Congress will be uh, exploring the library's collection and having and looking at um, uh, Oasis uh, throughout history. So look forward to seeing you later today. <laughs>